Hey guys, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with another new video. Today it's more about head units for cars than anything. Um, I know I made uh, some videos of me hacking and cracking into the Veloster head unit already. I wanted to make this new video because I saw somebody post on one of the Hyundai Veloster pages, as you can see, I'm on, about an Android Auto uh, or an Android head unit from Joying that apparently is they thought might be pretty good and i wanted to explain how i actually look into these things and how i look them up and how i usually find out if they're crap or not so the first thing i want to explain is normally these head units are obviously from china they are not the best quality and i'll explain why um i saw another video somewhere else it was a while back and if i can find it i'll link it if not then i guess i won't uh but i found another video a while back and somebody tore down a chinese head unit they took it apart and showed the internals there was barely a heat sink on the cpu they were already they were complaining about how it was overheating inside their car and just how laggy and slow it was compared to their stock head unit which was made very well so what i ended up doing is i went over to xda and i actually found a thread about this exact head unit and it's 51 pages long i've gone through about 10 pages reading all the comments pretty much everybody's complaining about the damn thing it's an intel air mount 8 core 1.8 gigahertz system on a chip so it's basically an arm processor that intel didn't technically even make uh as you can see uh they were in corporation with spread drum which i've never even heard of it does have ddr4 memory in it and a 32 gig uh samsung storage it's uh not even 720p which i find hilarious um in this day and age and especially since it's got android 8.1 on it that's kind of a joke so a lot of the other things that these companies do is they'll take the same or similar hardware from an android 5.0 or 4.1 or 4.2 head unit and just make a ROM because making a ROM is obvious is honestly a lot easier than people think it is it's just working out the bugs and stuff like that that's really hard uh, but they'll take and make a ROM in Android 8 or Android 7 and then just try to use that as a buzzword to sell the item and what I ended up doing is I actually ended up just googling the Intel air mount chip and found out that it's actually inside of this Chinese knockoff phone called an, a Senwa. The funny thing about this Senwa phone is the specs for this phone are exactly the same as that uh, as that head unit. It's it doesn't say the RAM here, but I found it somewhere else and I accidentally got rid of it. So this specific cpu is actually an x86 cpu it's not even 64 bit which android 8.0 and or android yeah 8.0 and newer are only 64 bit there's no more 32 bit android as of uh 8.0 but it's a 32 bit which isn't going to work well cpu with four gigs of ram is what this phone has it's got the same gpu in it and that just tells you pretty much everything you need to know because from there you can look up uh, benchmarks for the phone or something else. And as you guys know, I've talked about it in the past, the Galaxy S5 was my favorite Galaxy phone ever. I still have mine. I still use it for just music. It's an amazing phone. I'll never get rid of it uh, until the charger goes bad because the charge port on those is a bitch to replace. This phone scores lower than a galaxy s5 which is five generations old now think about that that phone came out in like 2016 2017 which means that's also when guess what android 5.0 and 6.0 were still considered new that should tell you a lot the galaxy s5 if that's what since that's what they're comparing this damn thing to Galaxy S5, I believe, shipped with Android 4.2 on it when it was first released. That should tell you a lot about the age of the hardware they're using in a nearly $400 head unit. That's ridiculous. Um, it, it's 
and this is just how I look into everything. When it comes to me buying anything that's electronic, I'll usually look up the specs of the item, think about how much it is versus the age of the components that are inside it. Generally, I don't do this if the computer's like 10 bucks. I'm not gonna do this. So like my uh, my Intel Pentium 4 Windows XP computer that I have in the other room, that's an all-in-one touchscreen that's uh, out of an ATM. I paid $9 for that computer. I wasn't going to look up the specs and be like, oh, is $8 really freaking worth it? Uh, fine. So, yeah. But this is just usually how I go about things. I look them up. I see where their ratings are. And even then, actually, 23 is just them rounding up. It scored 22.65. So it scored actually less than the 23 on the phone. And the thing is, like I told you at the beginning of this video, one of the videos that I used to, that I found a long time back was somebody pulling one of these apart and it barely had a heat sink on the thing it didn't even have a fan built into it so that should tell you a lot about where these companies are cutting corners when it comes to these head units do your research before you buy one of these head units it's never worth wasting nearly 350 dollars to get a head unit that has stuff inside it from a phone that's worse than a phone from 2016 that should give you a huge opening into the mind of how I do my research before I buy an electronic device. And that's the kind of research you should do as well, because this is not worth it. If this head unit was maybe a hundred to $120 cheaper, I would say it might be worth it due to the fact that it's Android auto, but 340 bucks is ridiculous. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I wanted to make this video to maybe reach out to more people that had subscribed that are waiting for head unit videos from me with the Veloster. I just haven't had time. We're on forced overtime at work and I've been focusing mainly on the prelude, just trying to get it started at least. Um, it runs and drives. Don't take that as what I meant, but get the project started and figure out everything that I'm going to need for the car. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you guys later. I got to go register the prelude so I can actually drive the damn thing. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. Oh, and I got to figure out where that damn thing is leaking gasoline from. Oh my God. It's going to be so much work. Peace out, guys.